I see companies like Toyota say the future's petrol, ice, uh, developing new engines. Ford, they're going to be producing hybrids for the future. That's where they're making their profit. Uh, General Motors, oh, it's all hybrids and that's where they're making their money. And they have a target. We're going to be making these well into the next 10, 15, 20 years. It's what we've always done, what we'll do. Uh, this is the future. This is the market. But it isn't. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Why isn't it? Well, the problem is that the market they're trying to sell into, this is people who will buy petrol, diesel, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or hydrogen, or anything, um, is actually shrinking. Now, in the UK, uh, somewhere around about 10% of all the cars sold every year are now EVs. Right. So whether you want one or not, this is irrelevant, but out of all the sales now, 90% of them are legacy or ice or hybrids or whatever, 10% uh, are EVs. If you look at other countries, America's a bit less, it's about 6 or 7% I believe, uh, Norway's about 90% now. Um, but what is happening, whether anyone likes it or not, is that the number of ice hybrid uh, cars that are being sold is actually reducing as some people buy EVs. So if we project this forward we will see that Legacy Auto has got a bit of a problem on their hands. They may well want to sell ICE cars for the next 20 or 30 years. They may well be set up to do it they may be fabulously efficient at doing it and make a sensible profit doing it, but their market is shrinking and there's nothing they can do about it. Whether you like it or not, there are some people out there for whom EVs are the perfect answer at the moment. Even if it's 5 or 10% of the market, there are some people for whom EVs are the perfect answer. As EVs get better, they will get batteries that, well, they're already out here. They don't burst into flames anymore. Uh, they will have a much greater range. You'll be able to get three, four, maybe 500 miles out of a single charge. And the charging speed will be getting faster. So you're going to take 10 minutes to recharge your battery. As this happens, you'll find more and more people will find that an EV is right for them. There'll still be some people that aren't. I'll always accept that. They will never find that the, the, an EV is the answer for them. That's fine. But the point is, if over time the uh, available market, this is the new sales market for ICE cars, plug-in hybrids and hybrids, uh, drops down to 40, 50, uh, 40, 50, 60% of where it was, it means that all the legacy are now trying to sell the same number of cars to half as many customers. And this is one of the problems with what we call a paradigm shift. This is where one generation of stuff goes out of fashion and a new one comes in. We've seen it with uh, LCD, LEDs, LCD uh, TVs. We've seen it with smartphones. We've seen it with loads of things where it's not the new sales driving it. It's the people stop buying the old stuff. You know, how many of you would go out nowadays and buy a CRT, cathode ray tube television? These are the big ones with the big tubes in them. We, we don't anymore. We stopped buying those when the flat screens came out. Now, we didn't all go out and buy a new flat screen. That's not the way a paradigm shift works. What happens is we keep using our old one. It's absolutely fine. It's working. And then you suddenly start noticing that you're missing out. Well, the first thing you're missing out on is HD. Um, it's a much better picture quality, better colours. Second thing is the flat screens, they don't need servicing. So they just last. You, you don't touch them. You just switch them on, watch them for as long as it takes, and then one day it'll fail. You get someone in, get, yeah, throw it away, made by a new one, the cheaper now. 
So what happens is the um, the people, the the buying public, do not all rush out and buy the new technology. That's not the way it works. But what they do is they stop buying the old. So with the television example, you'll keep your TV for as long as uh, a, it lasts. If ever it fails, you look at replacing it or until the features are so bad that you say, I can't actually handle this anymore. Uh, with me, it was um, uh, things like football. Um, the old TVs, I don't, most people still remember them. You could hardly see the ball. The quality of the image was so poor that, you, you know, where's the ball? You, you literally lost the ball. You go and look at your first flat screen TV and you think, whoa, that's the football. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a paradigm shift. <laughs> So what happens is people stop buying the old technology. At that point, I'd never buy another CRT TV ever. They're just, why would I waste money on the out of date technology? But I didn't have enough money to be able to buy a new flat screen TV and the old one was working perfectly fine. So what happens is I just carry on and then at some point either the old one fails and you get a guy come out and he says, oh, it's gonna cost you 300 quid to repair it. Well, 300 quid, I can go and buy a flat screen TV. So the decision's made. Um, or you think to yourself, I do spend a fair bit of time watching this screen and I really, really, really would like a much better picture than I've got on this one. So although my old one is still working, I'm going to buy a flat screen TV. And that's what happens with a paradigm shift. It's not the new sales of the new technology suddenly sweeping the market. They don't do that. But the old market actually just disappears. People go, I'll stick with this one for the time being. When it fails, I'll get myself whatever it is, be it a car or a TV or a whatever, a mobile phone, watch uh, the whole lot. So when we look at um, some of the projections that we have for the future, uh, people like Toyota are claiming there'll still be a market for the next 30 years. Um, I, I'm very much of the opinion that the market is actually disappearing rapidly. Uh, and within the next five years, I think people will have actually stopped virtually 100% buying the old technology. And that doesn't leave very much of a market for all the big legacy auto. Uh, they should have been getting ready for EVs and uh, having a product available to take over when people stop buying the old technology. But instead, they've been trying to force the old technology onto us with all sorts of incentives. Um, the market's disappearing. One of the reasons for this is that we've now got something called net zero. Again, don't care whether you believe in it. I don't care if you think it's all a big uh, conspiracy theory doesn't really matter. There are enough people in the world at government and above level and scientific uh, technological level uh, to believe that actually we have to do something about uh, A, our pollution and B, our global warming. Um, and therefore all governments around the world, all governments around the world now have targets for, for achieving this. Now some of those targets, like it just happened in the UK, they'll be put back a few years, but the target's still there, it's just been delayed a little bit. In the meantime, we should carry on. But all around the world, other countries are starting to introduce targets for they have to have X percent of uh, vehicles sold every year as EVs or they have to get their amount of exhaust emissions down as a company and they can only do that if they introduce EVs. So uh, all around the world there are countries now that are saying well, by 2030, 2035, 2050, whenever it is, um, we actually can't be buying um, ICE cars anymore because they will break whatever we've agreed to. With some countries, Norway's already done it, uh, they're up now, about 90% of all new cars are EVs, and people just, well, I've had several comments from people living in Norway, saying, you know, you looked at it as if you're weird if you go and buy a petrol car these days. And more and more countries will just slot into that, that, that mould, where you will just stop buying the old ICE cars, and so quite quickly, the market for ICE cars, whether it's ICE or hybrids or plug-in hybrids or whatever, diesel, whatever, that market is shrinking. And I think that's on an exponential 
uh, curve which means it will start shrinking at a faster rate as the next few years go by. I believe within five years buying a petrol car or even a petrol hybrid car will suddenly become actually we shouldn't be doing this. So good luck to all of those who've set their targets on being able to sell petrol, diesel or hybrids for the next 20 or 30 years. I, I was going to say I wish you luck doing it, but I actually don't. Uh, I think you'll find you're not able to do it. Well, thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more, just subscribe totally free. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave.